Corey Timboom often said that there was no pit so deep that God was not deeper still. Corey suffered terribly during World War II and the concentration camps due to the cruelty of others, but even there she was able to feel God's presence. But what if the suffering we endure isn't because of someone else? Maybe it's because of our own choice, maybe a choice of abortion. Can God's presence be felt even there? Yes, indeed. God promises us a life after choice. I want you to join us now for the series, Life After Choice. You know, every day we make choices, some good and some not so good. And often those choices not only impact our life, but the life of someone else. The decisions we make can make such a difference in the life of someone else. And I can speak for that because when I was young and not married yet, I became pregnant. And I made a choice that impacted the rest of my life. I made a choice to abort my pregnancy. I called my fiance, don't even remember what I said, but he supported me. He came up and he was there with me and he paid for it. I had had a series of x-rays on my back for work and I called all the physicians in the area I could think of, asking them what they would do or would want me to do if I was their wife. And they all encouraged me, have an abortion. So I called the local abortion clinic I found out how far along I had to be, how much it cost, and I set a date. The day of my appointment, I had to see a counselor. The counselor was sympathetic, but she wasn't a Christian. And she assured me that at that time, it was only a fuzzball, just a little fuzzball I had nothing to worry about. Well, I was a nurse, and I had taken plenty of anatomy and physiology, and I could have questioned that, but I didn't. I was afraid, my life was a blur, and I was panicking. The procedure was a nightmare. The waiting room was cold. There was no talking. Everyone seemed to be just in their own little world, and I can understand why now. They took me back, and I was shaking, and I was afraid, and I started crying. The physician came up to me, and he held me and it comforted me. He was so nice. I remember that very well. But the procedure, the pain was so bad I passed out. It was terrible. I remember getting to the recovery room, but then in the recovery room I passed out again. The same doctor, the one that was nice to me in the beginning, now became very irritable with me. I was holding his schedule up. He had an agenda. Making that choice impacted the rest of my life. I had no clue what would happen to me, my marriage, my family, my relationships. Everything was affected by it. I was clueless. For many years, I resented my husband for not supporting me. But he was clueless too. It wasn't fair for me to hold it against him. We both were blind. Well, after we got married, I was convinced I was no good. I had failed at life and I could never become a fit mother. So when I became pregnant the second time, I had a second abortion. I hated myself. I hated everything about me. There was to be nothing lovely anymore about me, and I was constantly punishing myself. One night, I got up in the middle of, well, in the night, and went to the bathroom and got a pair of scissors, and I cut all my hair off, really short. Other nights, I would go in there and sit on the toilet with a razor, and I would run that razor up the inside of my arm it was like I needed to feel that pain to still feel alive. 
You see, I had so much pain on the inside, but on the outside, I was just existing. I was numb. I also started bulimic, became bulimic about that time, where I would stuff food, and I would stuff food down my throat until I couldn't swallow anymore. I would stuff it down until it would all just come back up, a purge. What I needed was a spiritual purge. What I needed was to give all of this pain and regret to the Lord. Bring it all up and let my Redeemer save me and give me the peace that I needed. Give me the forgiveness that I needed. Well, I did reach out for help in the early days. On the Christian radio, I heard a 1-800 number advertised. And they were talking about if you are, being, are post-abortive, to call this number for help. Well, I called the number. I remember it well because even though I was at home alone, I went into the washroom closet by myself. And I told her my story. I made myself vulnerable to this woman that was supposed to be helping me. The first thing out of her mouth was, well, you know abortion's murder now, don't you? There was no grace, no mercy. I hung up the phone. I wanted to just vomit. Now, it wasn't too long after that that my husband and I, we were invited to go to church with some friends of ours from work. So the following Sunday, we visited their church. Now, this pastor was very loud and animated. He ranted and raved. And wouldn't you know it, the subject he talked about was on abortion. Well, he got louder and louder. And finally, he proclaimed, without a doubt, that the Lord would not and could not forgive a woman who'd had an abortion. I sat there in the pew and just died a little more inside. He confirmed everything I felt about myself. There was no hope. Life became just an existence for me. I spent money we didn't have. I hid food everywhere. I was on a survival plan. Well, years passed, and as life goes, no one knows what you're going through. We did finally start our family, and it all caught up with me when my oldest was three years old and my twins were six months. My marriage was falling apart. My sister told me I should go see an acquaintance of hers, a Christian woman, and I did. She was very kind to me, non-condemning, and I trusted her, and I opened up to her that night after several years of not talking about my abortion. And I told her what I had done. Well, she took it very serious, but she wasn't condemning and she didn't shame me. She encouraged me to confess that sin, to give it to the Lord, repent of it. Well, I was pretty broken by then, so she helped me pray. And I'll never forget it because I knelt down beside her that night and I asked the Lord to forgive me for the sins of an abortion. Not just one, but two. And it did make a difference in my life. In fact, that night at my sister's apartment, I felt the Lord come over me like nothing before. He healed me of my bulimia. That's a big deal. That assurance gave me the courage to press on. A lot of women who confess a sin of abortion will still feel miserable. And oftentimes they'll question that. They'll say, am I not forgiven because I still feel so miserable? No, that's not it at all. You see, sin comes with consequences. And unless those consequences are dealt with, we will continue to feel pain. It was several years before I was realized this. 
and I survived a very lonely, unhappy life. Even though I loved my children and I had them dedicated to the Lord, I wanted to live a Christian life. I wanted the Lord to be everything. Many, many a night I would say, Lord, just hold on to me. Just hold on to me. Well, it was 20 years past. And I was at a Generation of Youth for Christ meeting, GYC. And there was a booth there, that particular meeting, that I had never seen before. And it was run by a young lady named Antoinette Duck. She had recently come into the church, and she had an, a burden for the issue of abortion. She was there to break the silence. And the Lord used her to make a difference in my life like no one else had ever done. She told me her story. And as I was listening to her story, I realized that if I had not had my first abortion, my first child would have been close to her age. At her booth, she had pictures of babies at different ages in gestation. And I saw what my baby looked like when I had him aborted. They weren't mangled pictures. They were beautiful little pictures, a sternum, ribs, arms and legs, not a fuzzball like the counselor had told me. Well, I left GYC that year crying but also realizing there was more that needed to be addressed in my life. And I started doing research on post-abortion recovery. I found a program called Rachel's Vineyard. It made me a nervous wreck to actually go somewhere and actually deal with this issue that had been tucked away for so many years. But I did. I made the plans to go there for the weekend. The week before, I was just as afraid of attending that retreat as I was before my first abortion. I was shaking. It, the enemy did not want me to experience the redemption and the restoration that was available to me at that retreat. Well, I went, and it was beautiful. You know, I had shed tears of regret over what I had done when I confessed my sin. But at the retreat, I was given the opportunity to shed tears of grief, tears of grief for what I had lost. And it made all the difference. I was finally able to take my babies out of that sea of statistics and claim them for my own. They were now a part of me and my family. I have a scar. I will always have a scar. But there will no longer be an empty hole. You know, I dug my own pit trying to deal with my issue. And I fell into that pit. Corey Timboom often said, there was no pit so deep that God is not deeper still. She suffered terribly during World War II because of the cruelty of others, but even there she felt God's presence. Well, even if the sufferings we endure are due to our own choices, we can still feel God's presence there. He's not going to abandon us. When King David found himself at the bottom of a pit, he wrote this in chapter 40 of Psalms. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned and heard my cry, and he lifted me out of that pit of despair. I want to encourage you to give the Lord an opportunity to lift you out of your pit. He will do it. Allow him to do that. <laughs>